So you guys already know, and you're probably tired of hearing about it, but I'm going to keep going when it comes to this whole R. Kelly thing. But uh, as you know, uh, R. Kelly was arrested about a week ago, and he is now sitting in a federal jail awaiting trial, possibly trial, simply because his um, bail was or bond was denied and they're not letting him out. Now, we're not talking about, you know, some Cook County jail now. We're talking about a federal jail he is in. And I've said it before, when the feds come knocking, they have something that sticks, that's going to stick. And the federal system, they have a pretty high conviction rate. R. Kelly, P. Hive, I'm sorry to tell you guys, but R. Kelly is facing up to 195 years if convicted. As you know, there was a 13 uh, count indictment against him, including uh, racketeering, uh, which is basically, you know, obstruction, conspiracy. He paid off a few families and we're going to get into that um, because I found out something new just recently. And of course, the indictment reads that there have been other tapes that have been discovered, not the same tape over and over and over like some people are sitting here trying to spread that lie. These are several tapes of different girls, middle school age girls. All right. Now, the reason why I'm doing this, uh, this video this time is because there has been a little bit of a twist in this story. All right. This family right here, these are the Landfairs. And if you are not sure who they are, that is Greg Landfair in the middle there with his wife, Valerie Landfair. That is their son on the far left. That is Greg Landfair Jr. And on the right here, this is Roshana Landfair, also going by Roshonda. Sometimes you will see Roshana. Sometimes you will see Roshonda. What makes this important is that this is the family who was paid off years ago to say that this was not their daughter in the infamous tape. Now, before you start in and say, why are you showing her picture? She is a victim. I understand your sentiments, but Rashana's face is all over the internet. And I have said it before. I know the community in which she grew up. Okay. I lived in that community as well. So it is no secret to many people as to who she is. Some people didn't know who she was until this whole surviving R. Kelly thing came about. And she did in, I think for the most part, deserve some kind of, uh, anonymity, uh, privacy. But the truth of the matter is she has been living her life. She has not been hiding out uh, I think when this whole thing with surviving R. Kelly hit, she probably went back into the hiding and she kind of like stayed out of, you know, out of the public eye. But trust me, she is back in the public eye for a reason. Because according to the New York Times, she is now going to start cooperating or she has started cooperating with federal investiga investigators against R. Kelly. All right. Her lawyer, Christopher L. Brown, has said she's now cooperating. We don't know how far she is going or how she is cooperating with uh, the Federal Justice Department on this crime, on this case right here, but that's a big deal. That's a big deal because, remember, she is the girl, was once a girl. She was about 14 when those tapes were made and now she is in her 30s okay so it's been a while since all of this transpired so what happened here basically is when um you you may remember and sparkle kind of told this whole story about her family how they were a very gifted talented musical family all right uh her niece and her uh her niece's brother as well as I think a cousin or something like that, they had a group call for the cause. And Sparkle felt that they were very, very, very talented. 
and she wanted R. Kelly to basically help. This is uh, Roshana and her brother, Greg Lanfair Jr., all right? Sparkle wanted R. Kelly to help put them on. And as she, in her words, she noticed that her niece was hanging around R. Kelly's studio and house a lot without any parents, well, without any adult supervision. People in R. Kelly's camp were saying, hey, you need to watch your niece, okay? When this whole thing with the tape went down and the Chicago Tribune pulled her in, okay, into it and wanted her to see if she could identify the young lady on the tape, she knew that was her niece, okay? 14 other witnesses during his trial said that was her niece. That was her. The parents and Roshana herself said it wasn't her. So I, in a case like that, I think all a jury can do is acquit him because even though you have 14 witnesses saying, we know that's her, if the parents have now gone and testified and said, that is not our daughter, or not necessarily testify, but he did in fact, in front of a grand jury, the father, basically said, yes, that's not my child. Okay. Um, R. Kelly being R. Kelly, uh, when, like I said, when the tape hit and it was like, people were bootlegging it, it was all over, you know, it was getting, gaining some traction. You realize he was getting in trouble. What R. Kelly did is that he paid this family thousands upon thousands of dollars over years. It has doc been documented that he had paid them for over 12 years and sent them out of the country. Remember this group right here for the cause, they were actually quite popular over in Germany and they had a couple of like hits over there. They redid the song Stand By Me and they did another song. I can't think of the name of it, but they were very, very popular overseas. So he sent them away, okay? He sent them away. He even bought Roshana a GMC Yukon Denali. This is her right here. He bought her a big truck and showered this family with a ton of gifts to basically say that that was not their daughter. He instructed them to lie to the investigators because at the time they were investigating all these claims that that was um, Roshana on the tape because again, they had brought a lot of people in, including Sparkle, that, that identified her as her niece. But they, R. Kelly instructed her to say it wasn't her. And the family as well, the, the uh, mother, which is Sparkle's sister, as well as Greg Lanfair, all right? He basically killed the story or killed the whole idea. And, you know, what is a jury to do? Now, it would technically, it would have been wrong. Okay, for them to convict him, even though there were witnesses saying one thing, if the parents say, no, that's not our daughter, all right, and the girl herself say, no, that's not me, at the time she took the stand, she was technically already grown, okay, she was no longer uh, a minor, but when she, when she basically said it wasn't her, she was saying that as an adult, okay, you have to remember, that tape was not made in uh 2002 and 2003 when this when things got really really big and it was like circulating all over and people were bootlegging it that tape was actually made somewhere around 1998 1999 when this girl was still in middle school in oak park illinois okay that wasn't a new tape it just got out and it started to circulate and people were bootlegging it and that's when everything blew up. And then he realized he had to do something. And so, like I said, he paid this family to lie. That's, that's basically what happened. He paid this family to lie. Now, what makes this interesting, as I've mentioned, is that now Roshana or Roshanda has decided to uh, cooperate with the federal investigators. And that, that what the reason why that's interesting to me, number one is I didn't think that she would. And number two, the fact that she's doing it could have serious 
consequences for her own father. All right, which doesn't bother me one bit. I'm going to get into his ass in a moment. Okay. And I ain't worried about cussing and fussing on here because YouTube, every time they see anything dealing with R. Kelly, they immediately uh, demonetize it. They will not monetize it, period. All right. I've kind of learned my lesson. This is R. Kelly with Chance the Rapper. Now, the reason why that's important is because, well, again, everybody now is just distancing themselves from him. He worked with a lot of different people. And that family, the Landfair family, had some connections to Chance the Rapper. Okay. Greg Landfair Jr., that is uh, Roshana's brother, he was recently, just as of maybe, I don't know if he still is, but he was uh, Chance the Rapper's drummer. He is a drummer. Remember, this is a musical family we're talking about. The father, Greg Lanfair, is a famous guitarist. He has done music for everybody, okay? He has a huge discography. But Greg Lanfair Jr., who is here on the right, and that's SZA at the bottom, he is a drummer. He, he did a lot of drumming for a lot of different people. He has played drums for a lot of different celebrity artists, okay? They are in the industry. So it's interesting to me how all these people are now, of course, want to distance themselves from R. Kelly and his issues when they know this family. Landfairs have been around forever and they know this family. Now, I don't want anyone to sit here and think that I am blaming, uh, you know, the children because I'm not. I'm blaming this man right here. This is Greg Landfair. He is, a, again, he is an infamous guitarist. A lot of people have used him. He has been on a lot of songs that you probably listen to still to this day. He has played for the Isley Brothers. He has done songs with Maxwell. He has played for all kinds of people. And what's interesting is when I researched it and looked it up, he has been playing for R. He has been playing with R. Kelly since like uh, the late 90s. Okay, he is on a lot of R. Kelly's hits, including I Wish, which is in like 2000. He did the song with uh, Did You Ever Think with Nas, and that was in 1999. He did Fortunate, like I said, with Maxwell. He was on the Chocolate Factory album, which is in 2003. All right, he did songs with Twista. Uh, he was on the R. Kelly's TP3 Reloaded album, which came out in 2005. Please understand that date. This was well after that sex tape hit, okay? And R. Kelly was going through it. He was still playing for R. Kelly. Matter of fact, he is on R. Kelly's Love Letter album that came out in 2010. This is after the trial. So he helped R. Kelly get off and he continued to play for R. Kelly even though his daughter was the one on the tape. This man continues to play for a lot of artists today and he continues to be pretty successful out here. Like I said, they're a musical family. His son is out there drumming. Uh, Rashawn, as far as I, I don't necessarily know what she is doing right now, but he still continues to get be out here and make money as a, as a guitarist. All right, even though, like I said, he lied to the investigators and said, that wasn't his daughter. And now his daughter is now cooperating with federal investigators. And my guess is she's going to have to acknowledge that it was indeed her. Now, I'm a little curious about that as well, because I'm thinking to myself, and I've heard this before, and these are, this is just allegedly. But when I read uh, Geronda Pace's book called um, Life of Bun Beyond Abuse. And I actually read it. Um, I did like a story time on my, um, on my channel. You can go back and watch the, you know, it's just, a, I just honestly just read it. It was just an oral reading. I read her book aloud. And I remember a part in the book where Geronda Pace says that when R. Kelly invited her to one of his parties, because he used to have a lot of parties at his, um, place out in Olympia fields. Uh, she went, she came in there and people were walking all around and she saw, she saw none other than Rashonda. Okay. Rashonda was there partying it up. She reckoned she knew exactly who she was. Okay. Um, I've heard that on more than one occasion that Rashonda 
hung around R. Kelly's mansion a lot. Even down in Atlanta, she was back and forth from Chicago to Atlanta. Now, there are there were rumors saying that Rashonda was like a madam of sorts, some kind of like wrangler. She was something in this household. I don't know exactly what, because, you know, she, she kind of aged out. He probably didn't mess with her anymore like that, but she was definitely still connected to R. Kelly in some way or another. And like I said, several women have said that they have seen her at his place, okay? Now, a part of me is thinking the reason why she is cooperating with federal investigators is because if that is indeed true, any of it, then that could make her culpable. That means she went from being a young victim who could not consent to sex, by the way, sold by her parents to R. Kelly, if you think about it, because they basically sold their daughter over and lied to uh, get money, all right? They were willing to lie. Greg Lanfair had a very successful career in the music industry and still to this day is still a part of the music industry. And for Rashonda possibly to still be involved with R. Kelly in some way, possibly wrangling or grooming girls that end up with him, that would make her an enabler and possibly get her in trouble. And that's why I'm thinking maybe she needs to, or maybe she realized she needed to go ahead and cooperate and maybe get some kind of immunity. Because um, on one hand, I, I feel bad for this kid. I, I feel she's no longer a kid, but the fact that she was wrapped up into this mess, okay, when this man could have been put in jail a long time ago for even doing what he did to her, but her parents, her, these folks right here, Sparkle's sister, Valerie Lanfair and Greg Lanfair right here, her parents sold her, sold her out by accepting millions of dollars over the years from R. Kelly, going overseas so that they would not be questioned by investigators and Greg Lanfair playing on all these different celebrities' music. They know who he is. All these celebrities, again, that want to act like, you know, now all of a sudden, you know, they have a moral compass. They knew what Greg, Le Greg Lanfair did a long time ago. You're not going to sit here and tell me that people didn't know, especially if you're in the music industry, that people weren't sitting here whispering or didn't know that Greg Lanfair was the father of the girl that got peed on. You ain't going to tell me that these celebrities out here, these people didn't whisper. They knew. They knew and they still was cool with it. They knew what he did as far as selling his daughter. And I guess it was cool until, of course, it all came out. And now it's like, oh, well, we don't mess with R. Kelly. Now, please do not misconstrue what I just said there. I'm not absolving R. Kelly of anything, and I never will. Okay, he's a mess. He's a whole mess, and he is where I believe he's where he should be. But these parents right here, they deserve to go to jail, in my opinion. They are not innocent. Look what they did to their daughter. Look what they turned her into, if any of that is true about her uh, eventually going to become a groomer for R. Kelly. They turned her into that. Surely... One could argue she had a choice even after she was molested. That didn't mean that she had to still hang around her molester, but you'd be surprised of what this kind of stuff does to someone psychologically. Some people who are molested go on to molest and abuse other people. Not everybody, obviously. I'm a living witness to that. I am, I've been molested as a young girl and I didn't go on to molest anybody else, but that does happen. And so that's why a part of me, I'm conflicted and I feel sorry for this girl because this is truly the life that she has been living for years, being caught up in the, the, the mess that her parents did because they wanted fame so bad because Sparkle brought her family over to R. Kelly 
saying, hey, I would like for you to help them the way you helped me out. And this dude decide he thinking helping means to screw little girls. All right. I, I went in on Sparkle. I remember when the surviving R. Kelly thing came out, I went in on Sparkle because I felt like, you know, before I really understood everything, I was upset with her because I'm like, why would you steal? Why would you bring your kid, your, your niece to this man when you probably knew what kind of man he was? You knew about Aaliyah. I mean, Sparkle was one of, she was, she sung backup on AJ Nothing But A Number. So she knew how he got down, but she, and she still brought her young nieces, her young, you know, uh, family over to this man, hoping that he would make them stars. And he technically did overseas and he did in fact help her brother-in-law as far as, you know, what he was doing out in the industry and the fact that he's still working out in the industry, but at what cost, at what cost? Now, when she realized what was going on and the fact that that was her niece on that video, she did go against her family and testify and said that was indeed R. Kelly on the tape. But again, here we are, whereas they disowned Sparkle. They were like estranged for years. I saw an interview with Sparkle a few months back where she said they didn't even talk for years. They recently got back together around the time that I believe her and Valerie's mother had passed away and the family came back together And then when they found out that she was doing that surviving R. Kelly documentary, they became upset with her again, because again, all this stuff was coming back out. Now, um, as far as the surviving R. Kelly documentary, you know, I, I am not completely a hundred percent on board with that documentary. And I did realize after a while that a lot of that was full of holes, that the entire truth was not told. Uh, there was a lot that was left out and was not said about a lot of these women. But again, I am referring to children. If he messed with a child, he wrong. And I don't care what anybody says. If this man messed with the child, I don't care if a parent literally delivered their child on his doorstep naked, like here's my kid. He's still wrong because In a moment like that, I don't care what, I don't care how willing these parents are to give their kids over to a man like this. That doesn't mean that he could, didn't have the choice to say no or to not do it. They know that they were dealing with a sick man. And, and I think that certainly a lot of these people realize the advantage that they had over him. And the fact that they're saying that he's illiterate, this man can't read or write. They, it's just a whole mess. It is just a whole mess as to what is going on here. Um, but I guess I'm just, I, when I read that article the other day, I think to myself like, wow, this is about to get serious because if Roshana, uh, is cooperating now and they will probably grant her some kind of immunity because again, the rabbit hole runs pretty deep here. And I believe that Roshana was up in that house not too long ago, grooming girls. Okay. She probably needs to save herself. I'm curious as to if she's going to be able to save her parents. And I hope that she's not able to, because again, dad, dad lied. That's perjury. Okay. That's against the law. That's a jailable offense. Okay. Um, it, what a whole mess, but I will definitely be watching. Okay. Uh, he, I'm sorry. R. Kelly doesn't get any sympathy from me. And I know a lot of people think like for, I don't know what the reason is why a lot of people feel like, you know, we should pray for him and others. I'm just no more. No, no. And I'm tired of hearing, well, what about Harvey Weinstein? And what about Jeffrey Epstein? You do realize, uh, a day ago, Jeffrey Epstein's time run ran out too. He was denied bail too. So I don't want to keep hearing these um, comparisons to these white, rich white dudes. Because if you realize what Jeffrey Epstein, what Harvey Weinstein and what R. Kelly had in common is that they all had money.
that allows them to get out of shit. Have you ever heard this saying that it's better to be rich and guilty than poor and innocent? These men have been skating for years with the help of other people who took the money, right? They took the money. They were able to skate for years, but you know, you can only do that for so long. Karma always has a way of catching back up with you. And it finally did. So Jeffrey Epstein ain't going to get out of it. And for the record for him, I think that him or Kelly Harvey Weinstein, all these guys, I bet, and I'm one of them kind of conspiracy. I'm, I'm, I got my little tin hat on. I'm, I'm thinking about my conspiracy theories. I bet that they are part of some kind of larger pedophile ring, all of them. And I bet if Jeffrey Epstein starts to sing, he starts talking, he's going to bring down some more people. Hell, they already put Donald Trump in it. They already said Bill Clinton used to hang out with him. I bet it's a whole lot of rich celebrities that be engaging in this kind of pedophilia. Not just R. Kelly. It's a bunch of them. And, and Jeffrey Epstein at this point ain't got nothing to lose. All right. He might just save himself by telling. And I bet some more rich folks out here, executives, music executives, CEOs, a bunch of people are about to go down because I bet a lot of them are involved in some kind of big ass sex ring. All right. The reason why, uh, a lot of these men got away with it, including R. Kelly, and you can say what you want, but it's because they had the money to defend themselves. They had the money to make things like this go away. Do you think R. Kelly would have been gotten away with this stuff as long as he had, if he wasn't able to pay some of these people to make it go away? Some of these people were just like, you know what? I'm not going to even press charges against him because he just cut my daughter a $200,000 check. All right. That's the most money some people have seen in their lives. But what they don't realize is that they allowed this man to go on and on and on by doing sick shit to a lot of kids. And a lot of people got hurt as a result of it. I'm not seeing everybody that's come out and said that they was, you know, touched by R. Kelly's all this stuff. I'm not saying that everybody is innocent in this. I would not say that because I don't think that's true, but we cannot sit here and absolve R. Kelly of the things he's done. And if Rashonda, if she opens her mouth, which it is reported that she is about to start talking it's going to get real. And R. Kelly, more than likely, is not coming home. He, he ain't coming home, all right? Um, I don't have much to say about uh, Joycelyn and Azriel because, well, you know, even though I know a lot of people are like, well, they're grown, they can do what they want to do. Mm, 18 don't necessarily mean, I know those girls are not 18, but you have to understand something about the mind. Those girls are still very young in the mind. They have been brainwashed severely. I hope that somewhere, somehow, when they realize he's not coming home, they can get themselves together. And, um, you know, I, I, I wish the, well, the best for them. I'm not talking about their families today, but I wish the best for those girls. I'm not going to sit here and dog those girls. Those girls have some severe brainwashing, and you can see it. We, uh, you can call them grown. You can call them stupid. I'm just not going to do that. Those girls got some serious psychological unpacking to do once all the dust settles and they don't know it right now. And they don't see it right now because right now a lot of people are like, well, that's where they want to be. Yeah. To them, that's where they want to be. But if you just got to understand how the mind works to understand what's been happening to this girls, these girls had on goddamn turtlenecks in 95 degree weather. All right, that lets me know all I need to know about how R. Kelly has been controlling those young ladies. All right, so um, yeah, this is a mess. But uh, what do you guys think about this? I know everybody has a very strong opinion when it comes to R. Kelly. And I, and I get why the black community, on one hand, I get why the black community wants to just kind of like, you know, they don't want the justice system to get at them. I get it, but at the same time, we got to stop coddling pedophiles in the black community. That's why a lot of our young girls are missing right now. We got to stop acting like this is okay. Just because white people don't care about our black girls doesn't mean that we should not care about our black girls. We should always care about our young black girls.